a new challenger appears. What's up guys? So today we're taking a look at another airbrush <clears throat> and this is an airbrush by Grex and it's the Genesis XGI2 ES. Quite a mouthful. It's a 0.2 millimeter uh, nozzle airbrush. I think this is for beginners. Um, it's, it's the most inexpensive Grex uh, airbrush that I can find. I, I, I believe they're like uh, this XG or Genesis line or whatever this is. They have them, you know, in a top feed, side feed and all that, but they're all about the same price, 120 bucks. Um, but we're gonna open it up. We're gonna see what comes in this box and see if it's any good. All right, guys, so let's open this box up. Um, obviously, this airbrush does not come with a hose. Um, and nowadays, you can get these uh, nice orange hoses for uh, $15. Uh, again, the links for all this stuff will be down below. So if you want to get your hands on this airbrush or the hose or anything we feature in this video, you can uh, go ahead and use those links down below. So we're going to go ahead and open it up already. It comes in a nice sealed package, which is awesome. I love it. That way you know you're getting a nice brand new one. It comes in a nice box. It's not plastic, but it's like a nice cardboard with a nice it's kind of like a, a, a book, you know, it has kind of that book feel to it. Now let's open it up with how we get this open. So, let's see. It's like it has to slide out. Ugh, there you go. Nice tight snug fit. Stop, did not return sign and blah, blah, blah. Let's see. And we got a nice book. With some nice instructions and some... oh it does it comes with different uh oh look it has uh, different ways to differentiate the different tips and stuff that's cool I'll throw that to the side and like inside we have that nice heavy foam holding the airbrush directly in place we have the airbrush itself it's actually it feels kind of heavy yeah. Like, I don't know, I wish I had an actual scale, uh, but it uh, seems like heavier than the Pache tail. Let's see what we got in here. We got two different uh, fan caps, and yeah, Let's see here. So we got a, it comes with a standard fan cap here, and I believe these are magnetic, yep. So we have one, and then we have one that comes with two different, um, tips here so it comes with one that's just a cone like this and then it comes with one that is a has the two sides like this and they are magnetic so you could take these off All right it just pops right off of there and you can just take the new one and it literally pops right into place very cool and it has a needle stop Built in. Um, let's see here. I believe this is a chrome finish. This is not a nickel plate. So here we have different. You'll see the nickel plate. It's kind of more yellowy. Kind of what comes on like a badger and stuff like that. It's, it's quite fine. It's just, uh, you know, the chrome plating, it has a nice brighter shine to it. This one also has that nice lever, kind of like the Harder and Steambake does where it's more of like a, a, a half moon kind of lever towards the back, which is pretty interesting. Um, needle stop, let's see here. Let's see what we're working with under this. Oh, interesting. It seems like they have their own little system here forward. Yep, the needle is notched, so it's easy identification on the needle, which is it's nice to see little things like that. Has a nice indention for gripping, for airflow, obviously. 
uh, but also it helps to grip and make it just slightly more comfortable. Nice little cup, uh, smaller cup than usual, but it does come with a lid and it is removable. Um, so if you want to clean that or if you're just not going to work with that much paint, you're just going to be working with a little eyedropper or something, uh, you might not even need this cup. Uh, that's pretty cool. Comes right off and screws right back on. Let's see the tip here. So for the price, this is going to be competing directly with, uh, I mean, it's it's really close to an Iwata Eclipse, but it's going to com be competing directly with the GSI Creos. And um, they each kind of have their own little quirks to them, right? So the GSI Creos comes with its own little regulator, kind of has a big bigger cup. Um, this one comes with the two different fan caps. It's magnetic. Um, Luckily, you can take this off and you can just kind of take that off. And even if you can't reach on this particular airbrush, it's possible to take off this main part, clean off your tip, right? And then just put that right back on and you don't have to worry about paint spilling everywhere because the nozzle itself is its own independent piece inside of there that you can screw in and out. Um, kind of like uh, most Iwatas and stuff like that. But it's a little bit bigger, so it's kind of its own little design. The etching on here feels pretty good. Yep, got the model number on the back. I believe maybe a serial number. I don't know. Maybe it's just an identification number. But yeah. Anyway, comes with the wrench and the two fan caps. But we're gonna go ahead, take her for a spin, and we'll see how well it stacks up against the competition. And I'm gonna use a little bit of illustration opaque black with some 4011 reducer. And we're just gonna kind of start going through, play some dagger strokes and stuff, and then maybe try to do some fine lines and stuff. It is a 0.2 millimeter airbrush, so I'm going to reduce the paint a little bit finer. And hopefully we get a nice good flow and see what the airbrush is all about. Well, one thing I forgot to mention, it, it does have a standard size connector, so the hoses from Spray Gunner connect uh, on there nice and easily, um, as well as any, you know, just any standard size hoses, standard size hoses that you have will fit perfect. So if you have an Iwata, Sparmax, Harder and Steamback, any of the, you know, brands, uh, you're gonna be just fine with your current hose. So I'm doing a, probably what I would say three to one mixture. So three parts reducer, one part paint. Again, it's a 0.2 millimeter airbrush. So be working with finer paint anyway at this, at this range. Uh, yeah. So anyway, let's give this a good old shakety shake. Pressure is about 20 psi right now. Maybe a little bit more. I'm sure this out. So one thing I could tell right off the bat right away is that the suction of the, the 
aerodynamic section here of the paint is pretty good. It pulls paint. It's not just letting gravity feed it, it's actually sucking paint out of the cup. So first good sign. So even for a point two, it gives you a really big spray, so you get very easily get nice big dots. How fine can you get? So, yep, with this airbrush, you can also just put your, your fan cap right on there. So, one thing is that because they have this magnetic piece in the front, it's actually hard to see where your needle is actually. So let's see if we can spray without the fan cap on there. I'm just trying to keep an eye on my needle here. So you can, you can spray just fine without that. Let's see, Let me turn down the pressure. You don't need the fan caps on there, which is good. So I've turned down the pressure even more now. Sprays lines. Yeah, at this range, you can really see the atomization starting to fall apart. So I'm trying to turn the pressure up just a little bit again. One thing that is noticeable is the atomization is not as fine with this airbrush as I would say it is with the GSI Creos for sure, but it does spray paint very, very good. I mean, for a 0.2 millimeter, it's actually spraying paint uh, quite well. And that's directly out of the box. I didn't adjust it or anything. It actually seemed like it was properly set. It's not nothing going on. Um, but yeah. It's because it, it's possible to get such a big spray that it's kind of like... You know, it honestly feels more like a t-shirt airbrush than anything else. Let me flip this paper around. I want to give you guys a good impressions of what I'm feeling. And yeah, it kind of, it, for a 0.2 millimeter, um, and the paint being reduced, you know, pretty fine. It's spraying the paint, no problem. Trying to think of what to compare it to. I'm trying to say it's kind of feels like a, a BCS, you know, like a, a t-shirt. Let's pray again. Uh, let's see here.
No, I have no problem working it as a t-shirt airbrush. <laughs> Which is, I don't know, I don't know if that's good or bad for a 0.2 millimeter, but working it as like, yeah. And you can see here, let me try to get you guys in close real quick so you can see kind of what I'm talking about on the atomization. It's spraying paint really good, right? But let me see here. Yo, oh, there you go. Now you see that speckling around the sides there. I mean, it's not noticeable, right? When you do a t-shirt like this, it, you know, it actually gives it a nice like soft effect. It looks good. But on something like this, where you're gonna be getting in close, you see that, that speckling, like right here. That's what I'm talking about. So it works great. Um, the big, nice sprays. Let's see here. My thing is that it's hard to aim, right? So you have this big thing and it's blocking your view of the needle. Like the needle is actually not unless you do it sideways, but usually you're doing like this. On most airbrushes, I'm able to keep an eye of my needle where I'm aiming. And on this particular airbrush, you can't do that, which is, I mean, not really a big deal, but like, it's, it's, it, for precision, it's something that you don't want to see, right? You don't want to see something kind of blocking your view of what's happening. Just shake the paint up a little bit more. I don't know. Um, again, it's still doing the speckling, so it's it am, it atomizes paint at a, at a pretty good level. It just it's comparative to other airbrushes it's for doing fine art. Um, you're probably gonna notice that. See if I can reseat the needle. Like I don't know if you guys can see the. Just a quick little reseat. Doesn't pull it out or nothing. That didn't feel very smooth, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, and you can see from in here that this whole extra piece is just just around getting that magnet around in there or around there. And that's what this whole piece is kind of centered around. Which, you know, props to them for trying to innovate on something that... Once you, once you open it up a little bit, it sprays nice consistent lines, but when you're doing it, you just want to get nice. I don't know. Hold on. Let's do side-by-side -side comparison um, GSI Creos. Let me rinse out this Creos real quick.
Okay, so I've rinsed out my my Creos. I'm getting a new fresh sheet so we can start and do just a comparison. The reason I want to compare these side by side is because they are the exact same price. They literally compete head to head. And um, I believe each one probably has its purpose. But I just want to show you guys um, a quick comparison. So in order to get the same paint in here that we have in the Grex, right, I'm just gonna take some of the paint from the Grex and directly pour it into the Creos. So there ain't much left, so we're gonna have to make this a good, quick comparison here. All right, so first up, the GSI Creos. And they're on the same regulator and everything. I'm just gonna do one nice big spray and then I'm gonna do just a general line and then I'm gonna try to do the finest line I can with this airbrush. Just try one big, and again, this one, it's easier to just get a bigger spray, so already you can tell it's bigger than that one. And uh, we'll take a closer look here in just a sec, and then I'm just, just gonna try to get a nice steady line. That's terrible. Let's see again. Try to clear it out, do it again, oh. oh. It still has paint in there, I don't know. Try one more time. It does great if you do big, thick lines. There's still pain in there. Let's see if I can get a thin, thin line. Thin. There you go. Oh, it's it's coming. It's trying. You know what? Let me let me just rinse it out real quick. Make sure there's nothing just stuck in there or something. I don't know. We, we poured fresh paint, fresh reducer. It sprays bigger lines just fine. Maybe there's just some really something small, small, small stuck right on the on the nozzle, and we'll try it again. Yeah, just trying to be as fair to it as possible and give it a good clean. Even though it's brand new. Just run some reducers through it. So I'm gonna try to reduce it thin this time. I'm just gonna throw in a couple drops of black, Not, nothing crazy. And again, this is the illustration black, which is the fine, the fine, good stuff. Just a little drops, that's all we need. We're gonna shake it up real good.
Now this paint super reduced. not giving me a good steady flow of paint. If I keep that, you know, if I keep it pulled back, it stays pretty steady right here, right? But as soon as I try to like, okay, let's go finer and finer, it kind of just falls apart. Oh, if I could hold it. But it's kind of like a t-shirt airbrush, so. <laughs> If I'm spraying bigger things, like, you know, nice wider lines, generally. Let's see here. Let's see we do. It works great, even with super reduced paint like this. Get a steady line, it has to be about that width. You start letting go of the, beyond that. Oh, yeah, it's. Yeah, anything smaller than that, and, and it just kind of falls apart. Let me try the, the Creos again. This one doesn't like butter, like I could just hold that line all day. I'm not sure what's wrong with the, the Grex. Yeah, I could do it like, there it goes, there it goes, it's holding it. No. As soon as you try to get fine, it kind of starts. Uh, it starts breaking apart. Um, make sure everything's tightened down. Everything seems to be working just fine. You know what, let me try the harder and steam back right great. So just since I have it right here, let me try the ultra. I'm just still trying to give it the benefit of the doubt. And we're just gonna take again the little bit of paint that's in there. We're gonna dump it into the ultra. Make sure it's spraying through. Now the ultra I can't really I don't know how to get to the tip, but. Yeah, and the Ultra holds it. Whether if I hold it really fine, see that? Look how fine that is. Or if I start widening it up. I can just carry that through all the way. Especially with really fine paint like this. I just reduced the paint so much. Um, it should be giving us a great spray. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, it seems like maybe a little too much emphasis was giving on the mag magnetic and maybe not a 
enough on the atomization of the piece. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of a little bit of leftover paint in there. All I'm gonna do is gonna just add reduce. At this point, it's super thin. It's thin as thin can be. And I still have like, there's no way. show you that's that's the Grex this is the harder in Steenbeck GSI Krios. The Steambeck and the Krios are both um, running heavier paint at this point because this one is basically reduced, like just reducer with tint. All right, but as you can see, look at that. When we get up close, what's going on here? Um, and that's usually a cause of uh, the suction or the turbulence at the tip being inconsistent as here with the harder steam back again the paint's a little bit thicker there is a slight inconsistencies but not as much and then when we get to the creos again thicker paints so it's a little bit darker but it's pretty good again just so you get an idea of what what's going on here I'm not sure um, what the deal is. I was kind of, I was kind of hoping it would spray a little bit better, but it does spray nice big patterns a lot. Very nice. Again, the atomization is not on the level of the Creos or the Ultra, um, but it's. I, it is what it is, my guys, so I have to call it what it is, and it's just not at the same level. For the price, um, I would definitely go with the GSI Creos or even a harder in Steambeck, the Ultra. Here, it performs a lot better. An Iwata Eclipse for just, you know, 15, 20 bucks more. We'll probably do this and a lot more. Um, but yeah, my, my recommendation would just, you know, if you already have the other Grex guns or something and you want them to match, uh, I guess, like it's it's a good addition. Um, but otherwise, yeah, that, that's kind of my general experience is that uh, the spray uh, consistent he consistency here is not as good. The atomization is not as good as some of the other brands at the same level. Um, and that, that, that's just, that is what it is. I'm just going to call it like it is. Um, it's an interesting design. I like the design and um, yeah, like I just, we'll still use it around here. Um, obviously it does good on larger patterns like this. So when we spray um, stuff over stencils and stuff like that, uh, you'll see me bust this airbrush out. Um, but yeah, cool mechanic with the, with the magnetic, right? I just, uh, it does kind of, um, add more bulkiness to the front All right so the front is bulky um it's harder to see where your needle is and uh a little bit more thought should have been uh given to maybe uh the the actual aerodynamics that happening here at the tip um because it is sucking paint through and it's something that you could hear right so if we take the paint out You can hear it sucking paint, which is good, but too much suction um, could also create problems, um, especially if there's not enough uh, feed, right? So enough paint drip to feed the suction and or if it's just uh, an inconsistent suction where it's just sucking sometimes and other times it's not. 
hard to tell. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not gonna bust out micronometers and, and get, I'm not an engineer by no means, you know, I just, I know there's something uh, slightly inconsistent about the spray pattern that's going on here. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in this airbrush or any of the other airbrushes I've featured here, uh, the links will be down below. Um, obviously it's still a nice airbrush. Um, I'm still gonna use it for some stuff around here. Um, but that's just my general experience. Again, I don't like, I'm not good. I can't speak for every single Grex airbrush and we'll still be looking at the rest of their lineup going forward in the future um, because they are a brand that's there and they're around and we are going to take a look at them. But um, initial impressions, $120, uh, not very impressed. So that's it guys. Uh, hopefully this video helps you guys out and we'll see you guys in the next one. Later.